Hi. The title of this presentation is the derivative pulse current sensor and its application for protection and monitoring of GAN transistor. This work was done jointly with David Shapiro and Sharon Apter of Vizik Company Israel, developer and manufacturer of GAN transistor. The original presentation was given at PCIM Europe 2019. Now, the objective of this work was to develop a fast sensor for the protection of gun transistor against high current. Now, the need here is to have a very fast response because the current of a gun transistor can build up very quickly. Here we are showing a typical sort of a normal operation of a gun transistor. We see here the primary drive, the PWM drive, see here the current, the red one is the current of the gun, this is the rise and fall time, this is about 30 amp, and in this case the rise time is 25 nanosecond, in the case of a fold, this rise time could be even much faster in the area of a few nanosecond. So we need a very fast response um, sensor to react quickly and to protect the system. Now the module of the gun transistor manufactured by Vizic is shown here. This is the module and it is built around a gun transistor which is normally on. Now the auxiliary circuit is used primarily in order to keep it normally off so that for the user from the outside the assembly looks like a normally off assembly and only when the auxiliary power supply is available only then the unit will respond to the regular PWM signal. So the way it is done is to have a series silicon transistor, this Q sub 2 is a silicon transistor, which without an auxiliary power supply is in the off state. This is a P-channel transistor and the gate is connected to the source, so therefore this transistor is non-conducting. So even if you have a high voltage here, the power supply, uh, this assembly will not conduct. Now when there is a auxiliary power supply, then via this BJT transistor, Q sub 2 is turned on and the path is open now for the GAN transistor to conduct. At the same time, this Q sub 3 is turned on this is a Kelvin connection here to the source, and we have this VDD now connected to the source. So during operation, when there is an auxiliary power supply, the unit is on by virtue of the fact that Q sub 2 is conducting. Now we want the signal fed to the unit to be a normal PWM signal 0 to 15 volt while the GAN transistor being a essentially a normally on transistor needs a voltage between say minus 13 to 0. To accomplish this um, shift in voltage level the arrangement is such that VDD is connected to the source. So when the signal, the normal PWM signal, the 0 to 15 volt signal is fed to a driver, then this driver is sitting between plus VDD and the auxiliary ground, then when the voltage here is low, when the signal is low, we have here actually the minus side, the minus of the auxiliary power supply being connected to the gate, while the source is connected to the positive side. So therefore, the gate is getting a negative voltage and therefore the transistor will be in the off position. On the other hand, if the signal is high, then we are actually feeding the VDD to the GAN gate. The source is also at VDD, so therefore there is a zero voltage between gate and source, so the transistor is on. So this arrangement is actually translating a regular PWM signal drive, gate driver, 0 to 15, into the required level for the gun transistor. 
Now during operation, when there is an auxiliary power supply, the silicon transistor, the Q sub 2, is contacting. It is not switching, it's just on all the time, allowing the current of the gun to pass through. Now this unit can therefore be used as a sensor by looking at the voltage across the RDSON of this transistor. Now this is a conventional way of doing it, uh, measuring the voltage across RDSON to, as a measure of the current, and normally it is done by the so-called sample and hold method in which the voltage is sampled and then processed uh, by uh, keeping and say on a capacitor and then processing it further to get the information that is needed. However, in this sample and hold method, we do have a number of problems. Number one is the signal is level is rather low, so we have a noise immunity problem. And most importantly, this is non-isolated output. That is, the signal is referred to this point. It is very noisy. The current here is very high, could be 70 amp. And this will be noisy uh, in reference to the, say, control card that might be somewhere else. So therefore, there is a problem of noise that you have to overcome. And therefore, isolation will be very useful. Now here is the method that is proposed. This is the sensor that has been developed. We have here a transformer which is connected across the RDSON or across the silicon transistor. This is a blocking capacitor, a DC blocking capacitor. It is required because when the transistor, the silicon transistor is off, there might be a high voltage here so in order to prevent the current to flow through the primer here, there is a blocking capacitor. So this capacitor is just DC blocking. And then we have a transformer, you have a shaping network, and there is a comparator to trigger and whatever circuit we have here to turn to handle uh, the fault of the overcurrent. Now the circuit may look like a pulse current transformer, a conventional pulse current transformer, but this is really not the case. Now in a conventional pulse current sensor, we pass the current through the primary, comes off the secondary, develops the voltage across the resistor here. This would be the output voltage. This is the reset uh, time. Now we have here then the rebuild of the current at the input. And then we have uh, this area is the volt second supporting the voltage that we need here and if of course we'd like to have a high voltage then there will be a considerable uh, volt second here that we have to maintain which means that it must, the transformer has to be uh, fairly large. Now in this case we are talking about something else. We are not passing the current through the primary we are just sensing the voltage across RDSON. So it's a different operation, although it may look a little bit uh, similar. And then we have a transformer that transfers this signal to the secondary and then to the comparator. So here is a simplified circuit. We have the current of the gun passing through the RDSON. We have now this circuit here. We are sensing the voltage passing into the output and getting the output pulses. Now it is important to realize that the operation here is in the derivative mode. That is, we have the source, we have a resistor, this is now reflected to the secondary, okay? So this is N square R1, the series resistor, and this represents the RDSON. So this refl is reflected to the secondary, this is the secondary inductance. Now, the time constant is such that we are actually having here a derivative operation. That is, we are not supporting the voltage here all the time, only the transitions here. It depends, of course, on the time constant. So if I look now at an equivalent circuit here, and let's uh, ignore for the purpose of simplicity the uh, load and in fact also the uh, capacitor here, then we do have an RL circuit, which is sort of a derivative or differentiator, you might say. And therefore, the response is exponential of this nature. 
that is we have a spike and then it goes down exponentially now the height here is actually the initial voltage that is n times the voltage across the RDSON and of course having n large we can generate high voltages now the time constant is the reflected to the output that is it'll be the output inductance plus the reflected resistances to the secondary this is the total resistances now what about the volt second depending on the time constant the volt second could be very small and it is in fact equal to the voltage times n the number of turns and the time constant and if the time constant is small this means that we need a to support a small volt second which can make the transformer very small so this is the difference between uh, the proposed approach and the conventional uh, current pulse sensor. Rather than going through analytical expression, I'm showing here some simulation result uh, to characterize the sensor. Now the parameters of this model are actually taken from a commercial transformer that we are using. This is a pulse current transformer, but we are using it, as I've said, in the voltage modes but the parameters are that of the commercial unit here we have the emulation of the current of the gun this is the rds1 assumed to be one milliohm and this is the output section capacitance which could be the winding capacitance as well as a capacitor that we, we might add this is the resistance of the secondary and here we have the load so here are the here is the basic operation we have the current pulses supposed to be square wave and here are the derivative response at the leading and trailing edges and here is a zoom of this uh, picture we see the current with some rise time and we he see here the response of the system now what about sensitivity see here the sensitivity to output capacitor we see that increasing the capacitance changes somehow the output notice that we are talking about high voltages approaching one volt now this is the sensitivity and here we see the effect of the load resistance obviously when the load resistance is very small we are shorting the output but with the resistance of say 10 20 uh, kilo ohm we have a nice um, signal at the output now this is a photo of a test unit just for testing the concept and it includes the transformer a comparator and then we have a latch this is for latching up the circuit it has a way of adjusting the trip current level and also it has a preparation for an NTC for a thermistor uh, so to compensate for the change in the RDS on as the transistor the silicon transistor is uh, the temperature is changing uh, the circuit also has a manual reset just to, to reset the operation when um, the latch is turning off the unit this is just for testing of course now here we see a way of uh, testing the unit this is a half bridge a demo board with two transistors two gun transistor and here is the test sensor now the actual output of the sensor is very similar to what we have seen in the simulation this is the leading edge and this is the trailing edge now more interesting perhaps is this picture which shows the operation of the circuit as it responds to an overcurrent and turns off the unit we see here the current building up this is a 20 nanosecond per division here the current building up this is the sensor output and at this point is about 30 amp there is a trip point and the sensor reacts and turns off the unit we see very fast turn off and what is important to notice is that the sensor output is also very fast now we are not recommending to turn off the gun transistor very fast because of the danger of building up a 
high over voltage at the drain. So this is only shown for the sake of illustration, that's to show the very fast response of the sensor. Now, although the sensor was designed for looking at the leading edge, that is when the current is shooting up, it is possible to use it also for monitoring the average current of, say, the inductor. Now, if we have a half bridge and we have here the inductor, the current, say, is building up here, and the current of the lower transistor would look like this. This is the leading edge. This is this value, say, this value here, and this is the trailing edge with this value here. So the response of this sensor will be pulses that will look like this. This is the leading edge here, and this is the trailing edge, etc. Now, if we flip over this part, uh, the negative part, to the positive part, we'll have this picture here. Now, notice that the average current of the inductor is, of course, the midpoints here. So, if we look at the midpoint between these two, we can capture them, sample and hold, and look at these points here, then we can reconstruct the average current of the inductor. So, although designed for the fast response of the leading edge, so this sensor can actually be used also to monitor the average current of the inductor. To summarize, we've shown that uh, the gun current sensor that has been developed has the following characteristics. First of all, it's very fast response, sensitive, uh, so that it can actually uh, be compatible with the low voltages that you'd expect on an RDSON of a transistor. It's isolated, it's passive, there's no active amplification. The, however, it responds only to the leading and falling edges of the signal. Now, uh, we have also shown that the sensor output can be processed to obtain the average current. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention.